Hello and welcome. This is my attempt at implementing reinforcement learning on the cart pole problem. The goal for the cart pole problem is to balance a pole on the top of a cart in the center in a reverse pendulum manner. The cart can either move left or right in order to, to maintain that balance. The goal is to train a machine learning model to take actions appropriate to maintain that balance. Each epoch will end if either the pole falls, the cart moves further than a specific distance away from the center of the environment, or a certain time has passed and the pole successfully remains balanced. The longer the pole remains balanced, the greater the reward which we use to train a reinforcement learning model. My initial setup had something more similar to the original problem with a pole in the middle that would tip to either side, but once it was wired up, it would not fall over due to all of the wiring. Once I realized it wouldn't work, I pivoted to having the cart balance on its back two wheels, where instead of having the pole in the middle of the cart, it would treat the top part of the cart as the pole. I moved the accelerometer sensor from the middle of the pole on the cart to the very top. As you can see, these wires did not allow for travel of a pole to fall over to one side or the other fairly. For my environment, I used a couple of different sensors to track the cart. First, I used an HCSR04 ultrasonic sensor to track the distance from the edge of the environment to see how far the cart has traveled. The sensor was mounted to the wall of the environment and faced the cart to determine its position in the environment. This limits the distance it can travel to still have a successful run. I printed this cart out of polylactic acid, commonly known as PLA. The sensors were originally designed to be held in slots in the cart, and the motors and wheels were to be held on by hot glue. The wheels were powered by this L298N motor driver, which controlled two 3 to 6 volt gearbox DC motors. The motor driver was separately powered by four AA batteries. All of the sensors and controls were connected to this Arduino R3 Uno microcontroller. I used an MPU 6050 3 axis accelerometer and gyroscope mounted to the body of the car to track the cart's angle and angular velocity. All of these things were monitored and controlled through serial communication to my laptop running a Python script. For this project, I attempted to train two different models. The first method I attempted was using a Q network, and the second was a deep Q network. For both models, the rewards were incremented with every time step. Because the amount of time it took to communicate between the microcontroller and the laptop varied, the time step was measured by one successful communication of a state sent from the microcontroller to the laptop and an action being returned from the laptop to the microcontroller. For the Q network, the actions for this model was defined as an array of two, left or right. If the cart was heading in the left direction and received the left direction again, the cart would accelerate in the same direction. If it received the opposite direction, the speed would start off in that opposite direction at the slowest speed. And there were three different speeds, which were based on the amount of signal sent to the motor. Due to the need for discrete values for a Q network, 18 different bucket combinations were created based on different states of angular velocity of the pole and the pole angle. This model was an adaptation from Swagat Kumar's paper, Balancing a Cart Pole System with Reinforcement Learning. In attempts to minimize the buckets and training, the cart's position and current velocity were removed from consideration. 100 epochs were used to train the model with a linear epsilon decay of 1 100th. After 500 episodes, some episodes spiked as far as 20 signals. However, this implementation did not yield results better than an average of 7 signals on its last 50 iterations. The second model implemented was a four-layer deep Q network with two hidden layers. To increase the potential for this model to work, the action space was increased to allow for changing directions to specific speeds, ultimately giving more control to assist in balancing the cart. I invested more time with training this cart for over 1,000 epochs, with an epsilon greedy algorithm with a linear decay of 1 1,000th. During training, some runs lasted over 25 cycles to include some spikes up to over 35, which showed great promise. However, after 2,500 epochs, the average episode lasted 10 cycles over the last 50 epochs. Unfortunately, I accidentally overwrote all of my data from the Q network after notating the average duration at the end, so we're limited to analyzing the deep Q network.
If we take a look at the overall loss, it began to converge after about 600 epochs, which is when the majority of the time it exploited decisions over exploring. We can see it had a few spikes every few iterations, and I'll address where I believe some of those issues came from in a minute. Here's the graph for the rewards. For this one, I averaged the duration for every 10 epochs for this graph, and you can see where it started to develop a sense of balance where it trends upwards at, again, approximately 600 to 700. This peaked at approximately 1,700 episodes, and unfortunately, it died off at the end. I had a few more ideas I wanted to try to get this to work, but the wire snapped off from one of my motors, and I did not have enough time to replace it. So this is where my project ends. The key takeaways for me were that the DQN was a lot more effective than the Q network, but I think that during training, some issues were identified that contributed to the lack of success in improving the balance of the cart to an acceptable time. The first and potentially most significant issue identified was the inconsistency of sensors. If you look in the console, it is displaying the angle that the accelerometer was reading when the cart was in a stationary position. The accelerometer would constantly bounce between plus or minus 0 0.6 degrees between each signal. This would cause the angular velocity to shift slightly as well, which could alter the bucket that the state was placed in for the Q network or modify the layers in the DQN neural network. For the motor driver, after many, many iterations, the batteries dropped from 1.5 volts each to 1.35 volts each, which would have altered the amount of signal capable of being sent to the motor and altering its speed. This affected the physical change in the balance of the cart as well as the model. Fresh batteries were installed every 1,500 iterations thereafter to try and combat this issue. Lastly, while the cart was moving to remain balanced, some of the wiring would fall into the path of the cart and alter its angle, angular velocity, and sometimes launch it off track. This is where I believe the majority of the spikes are in the lost data. This was a design flaw which needs to be adjusted and properly managed in future attempts. This project has the potential to succeed with a few modifications to the cart design to provide better cable management and consistency, a more consistent training environment, and a few minor alterations to the code base. Combining these changes with additional training time should prove to make the DQN model successful. Thank you for watching.